Hey guys, Randy Potato here with a guide to Creature Dens in Darkest Dungeon 2. Creature Dens are a unique encounter where you have the opportunity to fight two waves of specialty enemies in return for one of four unique rewards. Let's go over the enemies you can see in the Creature Den. First, we have Rabid Nashers. This 14 HP enemy spawns with regular dodge tokens and has two moves. In the first three ranks, it can use Rabid Rush, a middling attack that can hit front two ranks moves them forward, gives them an additional dodge, and has a chance to disease. Fetch can be used from the back two ranks to the back two ranks, moving itself back while pulling the hero and potentially diseasing them. Disease and shuffle can be potentially nasty, but with no dots, this is the weakest and least important enemy. Carry-on eaters are the baby worms, spawning with 17 HP and no dodge or block. Their only attack is munch, which can be used from any position to hit any rank, 1 through 3, applying a small bleed and disease potential. If you leave an enemy corpse, the eater can eat the corpse, gaining HP and block plus, while transforming into the more powerful carry-on devourer. They do basically nothing on their own, but leaving them alive to transform can be a huge mistake. Carry-on devourer, as noted before, is the evolved form of eater. If it spawns by itself, it will start with 23 base HP and 2 block plus tokens, making them very tanky. They too have the ability to eat corpses, this time giving them regen, block, and a crit token. They retain the munch attack from its earlier form, and also gain pulverize, a front 2 rank to front 2 rank single target attack that applies damage, 2 weak, 2 vuln, and a debuff. They don't do much damage on their own, but the negative tokens are very brutal. If you let them eat and crit, they can be pretty savage. Webbers are the generally front rank spiders with a pitiful 12 HP and no death blow, but spawn in with two dodge tokens. They have two skills, web, which is a stun move, which also vulns and combos you. Bite is their basic blight attack, which can also give tarantism a quite annoying disease. Spitters are the back row spiders with 14 HP no death blow, and spawn in with two dodge plus tokens. They are position dependent. Their move spit is an even more powerful blight attack that also blinds. If you move them to the front two ranks, they can only use the basic bite attack. The gander is a size one mini boss with an impressive 29 HP, 33 death blow resist, and coming in with two block plus tokens. They have a party buff, along with an AOE bleed available from the back row, Mournful Howl applies a horror in a daze while moving the gander back and giving it a strength token. Jaws of the Battalion can be used from any position and is a strong front rake nuke that applies bleed, disease chance, and gives gander a block token. These fights are a strong early test of your comp's versatility and survivability. With every enemy featuring either strong dodge or block, AoE is king here, either with skills or combat items. The early difficulty of this fight hinges strongly on whether or not you have a Plague Doctor on your team. The dots here are absolutely terrifying, and having a convenient method to remove them is critical. If a Plague Doctor is not on your squad, you should probably avoid this if you have a middling team in the first biome. Alternatively, healing salves, medicinal herbs, and antivenom can do in a pinch, although as stated before, you also really want AoE combat items like Caltrops to strip tokens. A taunt tank can be useful to absorb the dot damage and crits as well. If you have an occultist on your squad, Vuln Hex is optimal to equip here since it strips all dodge tokens and applies a Vuln, making one hitting the spiders trivial. The highest danger enemies here are the spiders. Stopping dot damage and their higher crit rate from piling up is the best way to avoid death. As with standard combats, focusing down one enemy at a time is generally preferable. Because of their weaker dodge buff and stun capabilities, I generally target Webbers first. Throw out your combat items, take some 50-50 swings, and you should be able to down at least one a turn. If there are no Webbers, the Spitters are the highest danger, but I'll generally end up saving them for last anyways because of their superior dodge plus bonus. Remember that they can only use their inferior bite move in rank 1, so nuking front rank and then corpse clearing to bring them up is a strong tactic. If fighting worms, the most important thing is to play around corpses. The eaters are very weak, so I generally ignore them unless they are the cleanest kill, and I know I'll be capable of clearing any corpses before they transform. The devourers are also an enemy to save for later, because they don't do much direct damage, 
and their block, death store, and general HP makes them very tanky. If you're unlucky enough to face a gander, dots are optimal to dealing with it because it is a back ranker with high block. It's generally a good idea to kill the gander first, but not if it'll take disproportionate actions to do so if you can eliminate front rankers easier. The biggest tactical decision you will make in this fight is managing the transition between wave 1 and 2. First off, skills don't refresh between waves, so use limits like battle medicine are much tougher to manage. I always suggest equipping multiple heals and saving medicine for dire high dot situations because this fight is an endurance test. You will also want to manage your stress and tokens wisely so you don't go into the second wave unprepared. The way the wave system works is upon killing the final enemy of wave 1, the next four enemies will immediately spawn in and will act the next turn. So killing off wave 1 needs to be strategic. Stalling around in order to kill first thing on the next turn is optimal in order to get free actions for your heroes. In spite of all these challenges, I highly suggest you take a creature den in every region Unless, as discussed before, you are highly likely to die to an early one in the first biome, and also sometimes skip them in the final region to avoid diseases. The rewards are just too great, and the early test of your comp's resilience is fantastic. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Dark Extension 2 content, and let me know in the comments your strategies for tackling creature dens.